Yeah, it's it's a it's a great question. I don't know how to uh, to answer it. There is a famous article of Wigner about the unreasonable effectiveness of uh, of mathematics in explaining uh, physical systems. There's a lot of magic in the use of sophisticated uh, areas of mathematics that were invented for completely you know, different reasons or just for beauty's sake, uh, like group theory or uh, tensors or something like this that uh, tend to uh, explain extremely well physical phenomena. And uh, yeah, it's not clear what is the explanation. I don't believe that just because we have these tools that this is the explanation. That's, uh, <laughs> that's far-fetched in some, in some cases. Uh, but I would say that uh, there are lots of things we don't understand and uh, for which we maybe don't have the, the right math and we need to develop it. So often mathematical areas were developed because of uh, physical or natural science needs. And so there you understand why, it, uh, why it's, a, it's a good explanation. But still I think that uh, uh, there are quite a number of areas, and again biology is a very good one, or economics. Uh, understanding large systems uh, where the current mathematical tools don't go far enough, I would say that uh, Probably the very notion of a solution to a natural or social science problems uh, will have to stop being what is normally called mathematical, namely a system of differential equations like Maxwell equations or Einstein equations or Newton's equations explaining uh, some physical system. Uh, the, the, the challenging systems like the immune system or the, you know, uh, can, what cancer does probably need uh, more elaborate theories that will not look like a system of uh, like you know, five or ten differential equations that probably involve algorithms. The reality, you know, I think we are far from, from understanding. Uh, we experience it as we live, and uh, you know we are we are probably getting better and better at uh, understanding it better, so we can treat some disease as well. For example, and, uh, people don't die of the same things they died earlier, or they uh, they have maybe uh, more life quality and uh, so on. Uh, so we are progressing in understanding reality, but. Uh, uh, you know, it's clear that, uh, that mathematics is, is uh, different, but it's not different than uh, just painting. Right? So it's not like, I don't, I don't contrast mathematics and reality. Mathematics is an intellectual endeavor. It's something uh, we do for whatever reason, for fun, for uh, maybe for uh, application, and uh, in the same way we may uh, you know, just meditate about or have a discussion about the movie we saw and what we found in it. And uh, it's an intellectual uh, experience. Some like it, some don't. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> like. Yeah, do you have a problem with the fact that you will die eventually? <laughs> it's worse even, right, than Gödel's theorem. It's one of the most interesting uh, discoveries of mathematics. Uh, of course, at the time it was a shock, in the, you know, because uh, the, the mathematic uh, endeavor sort of assumed uh, implicitly for a long time that uh, with the right axioms, uh, you know, every true statement can be proven. This turns out to be false, at least for strong enough systems. In, geom in plain geometry, every true statement can be proven. So it's, but in some in number theory, so there are some true statements that we will never be able to prove, no matter which axioms we, we adopt. You know, I'm a mathematician, but my mathematics is, uh, you know, mainly has to do with the uh, with computation, understanding computation. 
which is in some sense closer to Gether's theorem because an analog of Gether's theorem is the Turing theorem that there are some functions that cannot be computed. But if you ask my more pure mathematics, uh, mathematician friends about are they bothered by this, uh, they couldn't care less. I mean, they, why couldn't they care less? Because most of the mathematical questions they deal with they are concrete questions where they don't expect that Gödel's theorem will bother them. That uh, they, uh, what bothers them much more is uh, their own limitations. I, you know, I, uh, first of all, I disagree that uh, life is ugly and messy and uh, life is beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, completely agree. I mean, there, there, are, there are aspects of life that can, uh, can be unpleasant and so on. I, I'm sure he was uh, probably talking not about life, but about the physical systems you study. Uh, also physical systems, I think. <laughs> You know, are beautiful. I mean, they are harder to understand. Biological systems. I mean, how we evolve from a single cell is, is uh, you know, amazing, and we are very, very far from understanding what, uh, how this happened, or actually why we survive. I mean, how, uh, you know, how we don't die a minute after we are born. This is uh, also magical. But uh, so there are definitely systems that uh, are, are hard to understand, uh, physical or natural systems that are hard to understand. I completely agree that mathematics is beautiful. I am definitely attracted by this, uh, by this beauty. I very much like the fact that things can be precisely defined and so that uh, there is at least never an argument whether something is correct or not. So, you know, if we are talking about free will, you know, we can uh, talk forever if we have different opinions and uh, there's no way to prove to somebody else who, which of us is, is right or not. But if I, have a, if I claim a proof to some theorem and you challenge it, there is a, there is a definite way to, to figure out which of us is, uh, is right. So uh, I definitely like it. Uh, and uh, usually you know, the things you like are things you do better than things you dislike. So that's why I'm there, yeah. <laughs>